Hello and welcome back to XCOM 2 War of the Chosen. My name is Saiken and today we're going to continue our Choose to Lose campaign. A campaign where we're trying to beat Legendary Arm and Difficulty with a couple of restrictions that you can find up in the description below. In a nutshell, we're trying to play niche builds and underutilized character classes and switch things up quite a bit plus spice it up with some a better advent operation night father is upon us and we need definitely a lot of um, uh, supply supplies from that supply raid so it's going to be my utmost pleasure to have a bit of a new team here reckoner is back from his mission one where he miserably failed and got wounded so now we're going to level him up from squaddy hopefully he can become kind of that main figure of uh, the run that i was hoping him to be sandman recently recruited and we're going to see how well reaper are doing with just their base kit and um, we're going to use the reaper as a bit of a recon unit and are playing the safe because the difficulty is moderate indicating there are quite a few enemies and maybe even enemies that are harder than the normal enemies that we would see. I mentioned in the last uh, episode that supply runs are infamous for having force rating plus one, meaning new enemies that typically wouldn't be in the game yet. So let's dive right into it. Advent forces are in the process of airlifting a number of supply crates out of this area. Okay, well, that is a smash and grab run, which I wasn't expecting. So it's not really fully uh, without a timer. Matter of fact, if we do not play that right, we might end up with just a few crates. What, if not, if not, maybe even none of them. So got the first patrol there. Uh, the first important bit of information is that these runs only start as soon as concealment is broken so by now they don't know that we're here and that is service. good it's exactly how we want it i'm going to move over and i really want to stay out of their perception range for now Well, of course, we're not going to uh, start hitting them. We're going to engage uh, with them soon-ish, but for now, let's just leave it as is. We're going to use our Reaper to scout out. All those n little nasty enemy packs. Position confirmed. And we're going to take the high ground we'll with do. some of our other operatives. Okay, fair enough. So far, so good. Those guys are pretty much caught in the open. There's the second pack and there's the stun launcher and something else that I don't know yet. But yeah, I was mentioning those potentially tiny bit stronger enemies would be able to, to be on this mission as well. What are we dealing with? Advent Trooper. Advent Skirmisher. Okay, okay. They try to fight fire with fire. Are we going to allow them to bring skirmishers? Of course we're not. We're going to kill every single one of them. Skirmishers are fighting for us, guys, and not for them. Okay, we're waiting. So far, nothing has happened. I want to engage that pod, and then from from engaging them essentially transition into engaging that pod skirmisher is is a funny 
uh, has a funny animation there. He walks as if he would be walking on eggshells. I go where you tell me. Okay, cool. So those guys are staying out of uh, the picture. Yeah, we're going to do that uh, once it is about time. Main question is, should we already engage? <clears throat> Maybe not the worst idea. There's a pretty decent chance that this guy is going to die, but the weapon range is also quite high. Let's give it one more round. There's really no no need to engage right away. This here is a potentially better, much more open spot. Yes, Commander. Yeah, that's a good one. I mean, we could claim more of them. But I think I want to um, keep that for the other pack. The skirmisher looks more dangerous, if I'm entirely honest. So let's just do a lame, normal, standard opening. And one thing that we could do is... Now I want to keep a protocol for next round, because next round we're going to engage the next one. So we're going to do kind of one overwatch and... Let's start hitting this guy who hopefully dies right away. Yep, very good. There we go. Ambu uh, ambush kill right away. That's the hit I was looking for. I was looking for a bit more damage, to be honest. And we're going to feed kills to our skirmisher, of course, whenever possible. <laughs> uh, there we go, buddy. Uh, that's what we're talking about. Out. Moving over. Nice flanking position. Sectored soldier. Ponders his life choices. will potentially move further back as this pack is completely decimated seeing that there is another pack right there i will just overwatch and let him run back yeah shocker i know All right, we got to be a bit careful because some crates will now disappear. There is only so much that I can do about that. Okay, fantastic. I could sprint in, but that would cost us our concealment. And concealment is a really important concept with the Reaper, so I don't want to risk that. Interesting enough, this would trigger, this wouldn't. This was also trigger. Yeah, almost all of uh, these positions would trigger. I think we're just going to go over here for now. See, that's the positive aspect about knowing where they are. You can move up without triggering them. And unless they are charging into us, if, if they just kind of retain their distance where they currently are there's a good chance that we can just uh, blow them up with the claymore the 
I did not set a target for myself as of how many crates we want, but anything between three and four is okay. I would say. Okay, time to check our chances. We could, that is interesting, we could take the high ground here, but super far away from where we would want to be. Moving out. Uh, I wish we would have another action. That would be absolutely fantastic. Unfortunately, can't do that. We don't have a sniper. Not yet. But at the same time, we can take some decent positions. And potentially reload. I'm just moving here in advance, anticipating that potentially this will be marked next and we'll just get a couple of crates off of that. Overwatch. Another Overwatch. I think reload is in order and we're overwatching. Okay, cool. So another round of markings will happen. After I end the turn, of course. There we go. The enemy finally decides to move into us. What? How is he overwatching from the shadows? That should have not happened. Oh, okay, because we've already been spotted out. Well, <sighs> gotta do what you gotta do, I suppose. I wish we could grapple over here and then just slide down. That would be super awesome. Okay, so if we were to use a frag grenade, just I would say, hypothetically speaking, of course. That could actually work out. On the move. Moving closer. Yep, so this here could work out. And it could give us a couple of kills at the same time. Sandman here was the optimal position to to basically flank two of them at the same time. Could have gotten for that. I, I still can. So it's not off the table completely. We've got another one over here. Oh, that's a shame. Well, we gotta start somewhere. This here is eventually killing one and removing the cover of the other. Okay, so... Hmm. I am still a bit greedy and almost want to go there and take that crate as well. At the same time, we won't be able to get all of them, so might as well be the smarter move to move over here. Just mark the crate and call it a day. But before we're doing that, let's move up. Skirmisher versus Skirmisher. Fantastic. And we got our promotion. That was the one that we were looking for. Return to your 
gods. Okay. Who can give me a resupply? All right. So we got our first crate. Good this work. one here needs Admin's to go. These two are available, and we can get them. And there's one more pack. Okay, remember we want to be in that three to four crate type of um, scenario. Firebrand is on deck for recovery. Keep marking those crates, Metis 1-5. Good. Reloading. We are reloading. Shadow is my domain. into moving that. forward. An outloader, oh, that's not bad. All right, Reckoner positions himself right here so that we can theoretically mark. Frodo moves over there. And Wurtz moves over there. Okay, cool. So far, so good. Next round of marking. Unlucky for us. We did not get anything out of it. Okay, given that we can't stay here forever and we kind of m must move on, we're marking. This one here is lost. This one here is likely lost as well. These guys are just a tiny bit too far away. My life is in your hands. Give me a so minute. I'll wait for them to come closer. the same time we're taking super solid cover full cover indestructible for three if they ever are moving into us we can retaliate and we got three crates now so we're well within the target i'd rather have three crates and a safe mission than like four or five crates in someone who would need to uh, who would die we got one promotion already which i was hoping for those guys here Okay. Good. Still want to use the claymore. I will reposition. All right, moving up. I'm hoping that they are moving over there. At the same time, we're moving over as well. Don't want to get too close. We're leaving the others a bit behind for now. And that's exactly why that was the right call. Oh no, it was just not the right call. I wanted to use a claymore to start that pack. God damn it. God damn it. All right. Let's get this guy out of cover. <laughs> there we go. Okay, he's dead already. Wait, wait, wait. Do we have... No, we can't explode anything. But there is the chance to move forward and have two explosions in range, which is fantastic. Let's see. That's six points of damage, but that is also six points of damage. How about we're moving over here? And then we're marking, which is going to reveal us. Which is fine again because we're fighting the last pack. And oh, let's kill this guy.
can't fully get to the sector, but we can get close. Which is, of course, what we want to do. Very good. And knowing that our skirmisher is already promoted, Frodo could use some more XP. That would have been a kill even if we would have missed. And flawless mission. I think overall we got, if I'm not mistaken, nine crates. So that exceeded uh, the expectation quite a bit. Overall a good mission. The one lamentable part of that setup is we are seeing a lot of new advent units but they do not have the chance to act and um, maybe that'll change over time but for instance the advent skirmisher that looked like an interesting unit i still do not know what they are doing okay cool so we can only take one and of course the additional skill um, when fired upon gain an extra action next turn or throw a grenade um, and that would not end the turn. You know, it's a difficult choice. I don't like reflex. It is not really good because you don't, you, you actually don't want to start being fired upon to begin with. Total combat is better because it technically allows uh, you to throw grenades as the first action and then essentially have a turn. If your grenades deal more damage, it sort of makes that build even more viable. So I would argue, and people might be of a different opinion here, those are two not very good skills, but action economy is a bit better than reactive action economy, so to speak. So in a normal uh, setting, I would potentially go total combat. It, look, it's... It really doesn't make that much uh, difference. Uh, both of them are shite. Uh, the volatile mix is actually quite okay. Together with Total Combat, I might have picked it without it. Yeah, not so much. Okay, we got 100 supplies. That is good because we need that for the squad upgrade. Got some alloys, some crystals, superior conditioning. Mwah, that is so good for this run. That is just so good. That is potentially a game-winning, a game-winning PCS, but who's going to get it? I mean, you can't heal. Mm. Normally, I would slam it into uh, into our healer, but since we don't have medical protocol, that whole thing kind of goes belly up. Mm. Quick feed already has one. Wards could be super, super tanky with that. And since she's a frontline character, might be not the worst idea. A improved aim is good on a grenadier as well. So that's good. Or we're just giving it to our protagonist yeah that's the right call here we go buddy eight hit points you're the man reckoner corporal reckoner to be precise he's hopefully going to lead the run from now on and we want to train a squad size one need a captain for squad size two which would be helpful because we're going to get more xp by having eight, uh, six soldiers in the field And there's the black market, which we're going to ignore for now. But it is, of course, something that we would want to get in order to have a regular income for supplies and also some option to spend our massive amount of intel on. Good, here we go. Additional 33 supplies. Okay, we got six days until the supply drop. So what we're going to do is I will make contact because that theoretically could be faster than the supply drop. And if we actually pull it off, that would be fantastic. Commander, we've utilized all of our 
available communications capacity. We can't if not, we're just going to uh, search for the black market. Where is make contact? Uh, that's eight days, so that's not going to work. Let's go for the black market. And then next month we're going to um, actually make contact. There we go. We've got a couple of things to sell. First of all, uh, mine shields are banned. Okay, so might as well sell the sectored corpses. Are we going to get rid of the Alarium core? Hmm, difficult choice. It's worth more than 30 at this point. The priest corpse. Hmm, sustenance spheres might be something that we need bit, a little bit later okay we got scientists here for 90 intel which I would love to have but we don't have 90 intel hmm well it is what it is so a scientist could have helped us just getting all of the research done a bit faster we're still at one scientist that's a bit of a bummer but we do not have the necessary intel well well maybe that just changed with uh, Frieda Ulrich an engineer 95 intel that we can then invest into a scientist so basically what they are offering us is to want an engineer and a scientist and we're going to say yes to that. Yes, sir. That's going to happen. Hell, Hellborn Father is going to happen in the next episode. Thank you guys for watching. Until the next time. And I would appreciate if you leave a comment and a like down below. That helps the YouTube algorithm in yeah, realizing that the content is good. And grow the channel. Thank you and have a good one. Bye-bye.